Good morning, friends, and happy first official day of autumn. I spent my morning finishing what is one of my all-time favorite books, and I don't use that lightly. I just loved this book beginning to end. It was one of those books where I was almost holding my breath as I was reading it because it was so good and I was so nervous that it would go downhill. I'll say no more other than the title. Rooftoppers by Katherine Rundell. Oh, so, so good. It's a children's literature piece and it gave me definite Harry Potter vibes, but it's not at all like magical or witches or wizards. It's It just has the same kind of coziness and comfort. It is about an orphaned girl and her absolutely wonderful adoptive father and a group of orphaned children who live among the rooftops of Paris. It's whimsical, it's witty, it's slightly weird, it has adventure, it has childhood magic, it has love. I'd say love is the overarching theme. It is everything that I think a children's literature book should be. My only critique is that it ends quite abruptly and I wish there was more, but it's so good. I cannot recommend this enough. Ah, I already want to read it over or download the audiobook and listen to it. I bet that'll be really nice. And you guys, look at these little illustrations. There we go. It's so cute. I've just been in a children's literature reading mood recently. Maybe it's because this season is just such a magical season and for the first time in a very long time, I just feel very in touch with my inner child and the world feels a bit more magical as a result. And I think it's because of <laughs> everything I've gone through this summer and um, facing myself and starting therapy and just really analyzing my life and what's important and making space for actual rest and learning to not be so hard on myself. There's so much that goes into it. We are overdue for a very long heart to heart and I'll dive into that later, but there has been so much growth <laughs> through this experience and for the first time in a very long time I feel genuine joy and it is magical and as such I can't get enough of children's literature. That being said, for my Patreon book club we had a poll for the books that we wanted to read during September and October and the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman is what everyone chose and I absolutely love this book. I've recommended it so many times over. Can you guys hear those squirrels? Anyways, yes, we're reading the graveyard book and every single book club pick, I like to choose two random patrons and gift them the book. <laughs> so I need to go to Powell's and buy two extra copies of the graveyard book for my patrons. And Catherine will be joining me. She's a friend and also I've hired her to help me with my shop because like I've said many times over, I really, really, really do want to have an online shop and I want to be able to sell my art to everyone. So we're testing the waters and seeing how that goes and she's going to join me today and we're going to take some pictures. We're also going to get tea and coffee to begin with and I desperately need to go grocery shopping and I've yet to go to Trader Joe's this autumn and I've heard that their autumn stuff is out. So we've got a busy day ahead of us and if any of this sounds good to you, Go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea, grab your coziest of comfy blankets, and let's have a magic. Happy autumn! 
This is Catherine. Hello. She's been helping me out with my shop. <laughs> and we are currently on our way to Powell's. Friendship story. I was also a mythology girl growing up. So, really? Yeah. Ooh. No greatness are made without consequences. Oh, juicy. Beautiful cover. I think all of these are hardback. Look at this. The Lost Library. What's better than a ghost librarian with a cat? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I want this. Look at how cute that cover is. I know. And then look, the October witches. Oh, I was born in October. Mm. Wow. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I just found my name. <laughs> I don't think it's good though. No, it's just the creepy and cold Morgan. So <laughs> it doesn't describe you. <laughs> Gee, tricky then. I hope I got it right. Ooh, have you read Ink Heart? Oh. I still so have good. my childhood coffee. Oh, so, cute. And so it's G A. Yeah. There's Coraline. Oh, okay. Same author, okay. The Graveyard Book. Cool. Oh, it's than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's, it's significant. Only eight dollars. That's really good. The only problem is that there's only one copy of it, <laughs> and I need two. Um. Well, you could get the whole set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. I really like Chris Riddell. He's the, the illustrator, illustrator. Um, and he's also written some books, uh, which I'm totally blanking on their names, but I've read one of them and I liked it. How much is this? 23 for three books. That's a pretty great deal, actually. So the great thing about Powell's is that there are books in all the rooms. In other words, this probably isn't the only section that has the graveyard book. Uh -huh. So let's look up on the computer and see if there are other copies around. Elsewhere. Look at all these copies! We hit the jackpot. Alright. They are $10 each, or $11, which isn't bad at all. So, Yay! <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> What if I was like, I like this one. You like shit show? <laughs> <laughs> I think people would be shocked. They would, they would, but you know, that's part of I also fun. have a sense of humor. <laughs> now we're looking for Les Mis because the Broadway production is coming to Portland in November and I'm gonna see it. So I wanna read it. H for Hugo. Wow, look at how many different copies. Also, I'm so intimidated by how incredibly large. Look how big this those like, are. Those are chunky. This is like a size of a cinder block. Wow. Wow. So now I get to decide what cover I like the best. I really like these old tiny got a classic Normally, don't love that one mm. um, you could get an abridged version I don't know if that's um, <laughs> blasphemous or not <laughs> I have never read an abridged version of anything but the audiobook for Les Mis is 58 hours long Look at how small this text is. <laughs> the margins are <laughs> minuscule. <Yes. laughs> oh my goodness. I, I don't know. I do like how this feels in the hand, but it wouldn't be comfortable to read. Well, I prefer paperback, actually. 
to a hard time. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. It's 1,460 pages. <sighs> Meanwhile, <laughs> abridged. Abridged. Hmm. This is looking really appealing in comparison to this. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll download the audiobook and try listening to it. Um, but this really overwhelms me, actually. So, it's a no. Okay. Mm, this is terrible lighting, but I've just dropped off Catherine, and while I'm out and about, I desperately need to go grocery shopping. So, let's go see what Trader Joe's has in the way of autumnal goods. what it is, but it looks really strange. You guys, I don't think this turtleneck is doing me any favors. It is so tight. It's one of those turtlenecks that's so tight that if you look down slightly, there's a double chin. <laughs> the good news is that I got it second hand. I got my entire outfit second hand, including the trousers. <laughs> Look at these pumpkins! They're so cute! This one especially, I think, has so much character. I kind of want to draw him. It's a him. And then we have your classic tiny pumpkin. And I just thought the pair were really cute. I'll have to put these somewhere. I think Trader Joe's does a really good pumpkin bread mix. They have the gluten-free one and then also a non-gluten-free one. Both are delicious, but I have a lot of friends who happen to be gluten-free, so just to be safe, I buy this. And I ended up getting the pumpkin butter. I thought it would be delicious on pumpkin bread or just morning toast. I was between this and the cinnamon bun mix or the cinnamon roll mix, but the cinnamon roll mix had milk in it, so it's not vegan. So that made the decision quite easy. Also, I am very excited about this. And you guys know I love the rooibos tea. So, it is already 4 p.m. and I am in need of a pick-me-up after so much out and about time. So let's make ourselves a heartwarming cup of tea, pumpkin tea. Nope, this does not taste right. Ooh, that's not good. I wonder if it's the tea or the oat milk, but something tastes off. So I'm gonna have another sip. Yeah, that just doesn't do it. Hmm. hot to drink, but the steam feels absolutely wonderful on my forehead. Mmm, that's so good. I haven't even had a sip, but mmm, I love that. 
I wanted to show you guys what I got at Powell's. Two copies of the graveyard book for some patrons. And then this was a really spontaneous purchase. I have broken my book buying ban for this year. Only lightly. Once when I had a friend visiting in the United States for the very first time. It was her first time in the US and she wanted to go to Powell's and we bought a couple books to read together. So that felt like a worthy reason. And then I just fell in love with this book at first sight. It's Ella's Nightlights by Lucy Fleming. It is a beautifully illustrated children's story. Here's some bright light. Here's a night light. Here's a little ray to calm your fright. Ella loves the light. Her biggest wish is to see the sunrise, but because of her delicate wings, she can venture out only at night. Ella spends each evening collecting light and then sharing it with those who need it most. It's so sweet. And you guys, the illustrations. She collects light. She's a, she's a moth girl and she collects light from the stars and carries the stars in a little pouch and then gives the light to others. It just looks so magical and my inner child was like, oh, I want that. So I look forward to reading this and to studying the illustrations because they are just so beautifully done and I feel so inspired when I look at it. Ah, incredible. I'm very happy about this. Mm, mm, I am feeling quite tired. It is 5.15, so it is officially the evening time. I think that I would like to start my puzzle, specifically the Mushroom Boy puzzle that I showed you guys in my last YouTube video. Yeah, I'd really like to start that puzzle and put a cozy movie on in the background and light some candles. That sounds really nice. I have so much to update you guys on. The biggest of which is Landon. So many people have asked about him and he is doing well. He is healthy. He is back on the trail and he is due to finish the Pacific Crest Trail at the beginning of October. And I am thrilled. I am so ready for this to be done. I'm so glad that he's done it. And I definitely needed this experience. I've grown so much from this experience and I'm just so ready for us to start our lives again together. And I'm just so excited to see him and to be with him. It's so special to have this new excitement over each other after being together for eight years. Absence certainly does make the heart grow fonder <laughs> and so does self growth. What a summer it's been for both of us. Um, we really have grown so much and we're both just so excited to be better together. It is exactly what we were hoping for this entire experience. And I know a lot of people have been upset that Landon has been away, especially when I was struggling so much, but I really, really needed this time apart. I needed to know that I could be okay on my own. That was very important to me and I have experienced so much healing because I was forced to really sit with myself, to be alone and to face everything that's going on in here and I don't think that I would have done that had Landon been here all the while. So it's extremely valuable. The loneliness has been extremely valuable and I'm so grateful for this experience and I can't imagine my life without it. And I'm sure Landon and I will talk so much more about it. Maybe we'll do a Q and A when he gets back or just sit down and chat with you guys. But yes, he's doing very well and we are soon to be reunited. That being said, it's been a wild ride and thank you guys so much for being with me through it all. I know I haven't made nearly as many videos I couldn't. There were days where I just kind of get out of bed, but I'm feeling so much better, truly, genuinely.
I'm feeling so much better. So cheers to that. Mm. And if you're going through anything remotely similar or just struggling in general, life is really, really hard. And I just wanna say that you are stronger than whatever it is you're going through. You will win. You will come out of the other side better. There's simply no other option. It's going to happen. It might take time, but you are absolutely incredible and you are not alone. And even though it doesn't seem like it, everything will be okay. Eventually. <laughs> what other option is there? Even when it's not okay, for a very long time it eventually becomes okay. So just push through it. And also it's okay to be struggling. It's okay to be having a hard time. It's okay to not be happy. Sometimes you just have to not be happy because life is hard. And it's also extraordinary. And the opposites are annoying, but it is just the way that it is. So life is hard and also you will be okay. I believe in you and I'm giving you the very biggest hug and so is Rue. he's here too he wants you to know that you are not alone i find so much comfort in youtube videos when i wallow i have youtube videos on in the background just constantly especially in my time alone i just sit and i listen to youtube videos or i watch youtube videos it really really helps so if that's what you're doing right now I'm really happy you're here and I'm honored to spend this time with you. Monsieur Roo would like his dinner. Are you hungry? Are you telling me that you're hungry? Hmm? And I would too. And I'm also gonna change out of this wildly uncomfortable turtleneck. Gonna make myself some dinner, light some candles, put on a movie, and get to puzzling. Oh my goodness, I'm so spooked, you guys. <laughs> I just watched a really scary show and now I'm scared. <laughs> I'm excited. I am excited. This is fun. Oh, I don't want to be in the dark. Oh. Quick, Monsieur Rue. Thank you. Yes. I'm so happy that I have you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you. Please excuse my pile of clothes. I'm in the process, or I'm going to switch over my fall and winter clothes, and this is just a pile of all the winter clothes that I have yet to put away. We'll do that on Sunday, I think. <sighs> I'm tired. Oh no, I think I left my phone. Oh. No, I left my phone somewhere. Okay, let's go get our phone. I mean, my phone, it's my phone. But you guys are coming with me because I'm scared. Okay, 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 okay. Ruth's coming too. Lead the way. 
Where is it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. I got it. Yes. Okay. Quick. Back to the bed. <laughs> you just pushed me. You just pushed me on the way to safety. We're safe. <laughs> I'm one of those people who cannot half-heartedly watch a new show or movie. In fact, I can't half-heartedly watch a familiar show or movie unless it's one that I have watched literally, I don't know, 20 times. A comfort movie or a comfort show. And I wanted to watch something new tonight. And Max, HBO Max, Max, had a bunch of highlighted spooky stuff and I decided to try and watch Nancy Drew. Not at all like the books. Zero percent like the books. <laughs> it's very scary. Um, and it sucked me right in and I just couldn't look away and now I don't want to be in a dark room. <laughs> but it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's fun. It feels, I feel like I don't know, a teenager again, <laughs> trying to watch scary movies. So tonight I am gonna head off to bed and to help me relax and be less scared, I'm gonna read some children's, a children's story and um, hopefully have sweet dreams. So, sweet, sweet dreams.